Hi there, it's Christina Lovisa, and today I'm going to talk to you about um, doing faux encaustic, or if, if encaustic, if that word doesn't even interest you, it's how to finish your artwork. So I have a few different ways of finishing my art, and I apologize for the shaky camera today. We're on a little bit of a field trip through my studio so I can show you different things. Um, and I don't have a camera crew following me, so we are going to have to do this handheld. So apologies for my um, poor video skills. And I'm going to flip this around in a moment. But first and foremost, I wanted to talk to you about doing um, um, uh, faux encaustic or, or finishing when it's an acrylic-based painting. So I'm going to flip this around and then we can talk a little bit more about that. So... Um, but firstly, I'll just tell you, when I when I do any of my artwork, it generally starts with paint and collage. Um, and not all paints are created equally, right? So if I'm working in um, a mineral-based paint, like a chalk paint or something like that, it's quite opaque and you don't always get the nice translucency that you can't always get the nice translucency that you want to achieve when you're working with acrylics or oil paints or something like that. So, and those of you who are familiar with encaustic know that um, the the recipient base, so the painting needs to be created in a mixed media base um, or, a, or a, a painted base or something that can receive wax. So uh, acrylic is not one of those materials. Acrylic is actually shiny and plastic and it repels the wax. So that's just the long and short of it. But there are times when I'm working in my studio, let me change this so you don't have to look at my lights. Um, there are times when I'm working in my studio and I'll grab a color that'll interest me, but it's in my acrylic line. So if it's in the acrylic line, it's gonna dry shiny, it's gonna be reflective, and in little amounts, I can I can adjust that so that I can actually put real encaustic on top. But um, I don't always need to finish my paintings in full encaustic. And so I'm gonna walk you through some of my paintings and explain that so that you can see what it is I'm talking about. So let's flip this camera around. And we'll start with um, this painting that I put up here. So I'm hoping the camera will catch the subtleties of this. But you see the shine that you're seeing in this painting? This, and then all the little wonderful bits and all that, this is all encaustic up here. So the upper portion of this painting is all encaustic. And so what was underneath had to be able to support and hold onto that encaustic wax. And then once buffed, you get this really nice shine and everything else. Now, the way I like to break my paintings up is by sections of, of finishing materials. So whereas I'm really enjoying the encaustic on the top, it's also a bit um, ethereal and maybe foggy. So on the lower portion, I've actually done a super mixed media base, which is more grungy and scratchy and textural. And if I were to cover that all in wax, as you can see over here, it kind of mitigates all that and it, it softens it. And then you can see the difference right between this dry scratchy side where you see all the texture and then this side which is really smooth and waxy like. So I actually like to do a combination of different finishes in my artwork. And sometimes the substrate, meaning the painting that I've done underneath, is not conducive. You can see all in here. This is all just like mixed media, whereas the shiny wax is up here. Just go through that. Then I'll back off so you can see the whole thing and how it looks separately. Okay, so we've got the two different finishes, the encaustic on the top and then the um, acrylic or chalk paint based bottom. Now this part on the bottom it still needs to be sealed with something and it still needs to be finished because if I'm selling this painting, you know, the top can be buffed and shiny and beautiful and whatever else, but the bottom, I can't just leave it like that because now it's actually, um, it's not UV protected. It's not, um, it's basically just not finished. So I'm going to show you how I do faux encaustic and faux encaustic can be done um, subtly I guess is would be a good word. So it's not as thick and and um, and um, 
concealing, I guess would be a good word for this, as the, as the bottom part. So I want the bottom to match a little bit in sheen, but I want this side to show a lot more of the texture and the grunginess. And if I were to bury it all in wax, you wouldn't see that. So um, let's go over to this other big one up here, which as you can see, and I'm having to stand back because these paintings are quite large. As you can see, this is a 48 by 60, I think. So it's, it's a big piece. And this main pink part of this fox is faux encaustic. And the reason I did that is because once I painted the pink, the pink is actually um, a watered down hot pink and a hot orange fluorescent color. So when I, when I thinned them out, I shouldn't say watered down, I glazed, I added a glaze, an acrylic glaze, so that it would make those colors translucent. And because it made those colors translucent, you can see that it's added a lot of, I can still see what's going on through here, right? So I can still see the scratches, I can still see the marks, I can still see even like this yellow little dotted line that came from a, um, a sewing tool applicator. We sell those on a curated nest at our website as well. Um, but I'm gonna to talk to you about, about the how I was able to achieve that look which actually looks like it's encaustic when you're far away because it's really thick and it's not super super shiny but at the same time when the wax is dry i can buff it and i can get it a little bit shinier but then next to it here you can still see the texture of everything through and i don't know if you can see this but this like this 23 here, this one is protected and it's thicker and it's been coated. And on this side, all I did was rub the wax on it. So I'm gonna show you those two um, finishes together, this whole area, to show you faux encaustic and then just the wax. So that piece also shows, you know, the difference of the different areas and the different finishes. But at the same time, I need my surface to be protected. And I also need an acrylic base to be covered in something that um, when I do a show. OK, let me just try to back up a little bit and explain this a little bit better. But when I do a show and I have 30 new paintings, right, I don't I, I don't necessarily want to be touted as the encaustic artist. Um, because when I do a faux encaustic, I feel like I'm cheating, but at the same time, I also call myself just a mixed media artist. And that way I feel I can get away with in the same show, having faux encaustic right beside, um, mostly encaustic paintings. And then I can move into full encaustic and I can move into full mixed media paintings. So let me show you how I achieve these and with the products. So this piece that I grabbed, I got it out of the light so that we don't have, I've got really good glare going on here. But this piece is actually all, it's just on a board that was done um, while traveling. And this wasn't actually done by me. This was gifted to me by somebody whose piece I really liked. So um, I think it goes like this. But it doesn't matter. The the um, end result... Hi, Donna. The end result to this is that it is done fully in acrylic. There, I'll put it down so we can talk about it and it's not so shaky. So this piece is done fully in acrylic. There is absolutely no... Um, encaustic to this and to you guys a lot of you know my trick of putting clear gesso on something and by Liquitex and then um, doing my my encaustic on top that is a lot to ask of this this is a 12 by 12 panel and that is a lot to ask of that little bit of gesso to hold on to that much wax so I would consider this not even eligible at this point for um for real encaustic this is absolutely scheduled for a faux encaustic so let me show you how i do that so i'm going to put it over here i'm going to hold the camera with one hand and i might have to turn off the light so that oh it's okay so i'm going to show you how i do that so we sell a product called triple thick now this is not the original bottle i actually um 
pour all my my triple thing into bigger squeeze containers. We do sell bigger bottles, but I'm always adding to the same ones so that I don't have, you know, 15 little bottles on the go. So I'm always adding to one. So the product is called Triple Thick. It is an acrylic, but what's beautiful about this is I can put this on and it is, um, it is, it's called Triple Thick because it's three times thicker than regular um, acrylic medium. So I am going to put this all over my painting in a huge quantity. And you can see I got a lot going on here and it looks very white, right? So, and that's with good reason. It's going to, as it dries, it's going to become clear, but as it's white, it actually allows me to move it around and make sure I get right to the edge. So some of you may want to tape if you're, um, uncomfortable with, you know, free forming your edges and stuff like that. But what I like about this is let's say that's all I wanted to, to do. You know, maybe I wanted that shape um, to be in triple thick, just like when I did the big one, I taped off a big rectangle. And then once I taped that big rectangle, I just spread this um, within the space. So if I wanted to leave it like that, I could. But if I want to go right to the edge, I'm going to try and do this so it's not um, making you all seasick. I'm going to pick up my my applicator and I'm going to just create a little barrier wall. So by creating a barrier wall, I'm allowing that to just sit momentarily and be my 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 fence. Okay, so I'm going to add my triple thick like that and now I have a barrier wall. So now when I go up with my triple thick, I can bring it up to the edge of my fence and it won't run over. Making sure, of course, that your, your edge or, or sorry, your board is perfectly flat. So you want your painting to be perfectly flat so it doesn't run all over. Um, I'm also one of those people who doesn't tape when using epoxy. Um, I just try to do this first. So I make a barrier wall first, a little fence, by carefully applying the epoxy right to the edge. But in triple thick, that's all I have to do. Then I go around and I do the whole thing right up to the edge. And I'll move my, my triple thick around. Okay, so and it self levels to a certain degree. So what that means is that it's going to um, like once it's all filled in in these areas. Um, hi, Debbie, I can tell you what I'm doing today. I'm showing different finishes and um, this is I'm using triple thick to create a faux encaustic. So you'll be able to watch the replay. I'll be able to put that on right away. But faux encaustic, um, I'll give a quick little recap is when I wanna do different finishes within the same painting or if I have a heavily acrylic painting that I want to resemble encaustic, but I don't necessarily want to um, risk applying wax to something that has uh, previously been subject to a lot of acrylic or something like that. So now in this painting, so I'll show you guys this painting. So I may have to, I'll put it like that, just so you can see. So the top portion is all acrylic, uh, sorry, is all um, triple thick what? The product is called triple thick. It's a triple thick acrylic medium. So we sell it at the store. It's relatively inexpensive product, which is another reason I love, but it is called triple thick. That is the name of it. So, um, uh, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll explain a little more in this painting. So this painting is longer and and narrow and you can see by the size of it like it's the top part I'm going to get in for some close-ups the top part is all in beeswax okay so it's got a natural encaustic I've got natural up here over top of chalk paint and things like that I've got some white encaustic medium in this portion I've got inclusions with different papers and tissue papers and things like that then at the bottom um, 
so getting into this area, I started to go a little heavier with the acrylic painting because up here it was all done with chalk paints. And then down here, I started to get into acrylic. And because I got into acrylic, I thought, you know what, I don't want to ask that much of my encaustic, um, uh, or sorry, my, my transition medium, the one that I use, the clear gesso. So instead, I decided to move into a triple thick um, faux encaustic base. So I've already poured one layer down here. That's why you can see it's really shiny right now. But I'm actually going to um, build that up maybe with a second layer. So I can actually have that super, super thick on the bottom, which will almost mimic what's going on on top. But then I don't want this part to be super shiny because the triple thickles will dry super shiny. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to, I use a furniture wax that we sell by Dixie Bell. And it's called Best Dang Wax, as in D-A-N-G. And Best Dang Wax is how I finish most of my paintings that aren't done in encaustic. So if it's an acrylic painting, or if it's a full encaustic painting, I just pick it up on a rag and I'll make circles with this furniture wax and then I will allow it to dry. And then what it's going to do, I'm gonna grab some more best dang wax. I can apply two or three layers if I want until I achieve what looks like a mixed media, or sorry, what looks like an encaustic finish. So the thickness of the triple thick, right, will give you a thick enough coating, if you will, that when rubbed with the furniture wax, and once it's dry, will actually mimic the look of encaustic. So that's why I call it faux encaustic, because it will actually mimic that look for you. But at the same time, it unifies the top and the bottom so when that's dry this painting which i can stand up for you and then we can see it a little bit better vertically there we go so this painting once it's dry maybe i'll turn off that light too because we've got a lot of glare going on here um that didn't help much. Sorry about that. It's overhead lighting. Um, but once that painting is dry, the top and the bottom are going to have the same qualities. Okay, so they won't look entirely different. But up close, you'll see the different textures, you'll see the different um, materials used, you'll see the difference in what I've created. But at the same time, the unification the unified appearance comes from the wax. So the wax itself actually can just go right on top of the mixed media paper. So I'll show you this one again. Um, and the reason I'm going to highlight this one again is because on this one, I did faux encaustic in the big pink rectangle, right? Because I wanted that portion which had been created out of mostly acrylic i didn't want it to i didn't want to risk putting wax on top of something that was so heavily acrylic and then that left me with um my huge border but like this is a very big painting so that left me with my huge border of different materials including here we go including metallic foils so you can see the metallic foils in here if I were to cover that in real wax, it would dull it down immediately. So I want to keep that sheen going and I want people to be able to see like the translucency and then the reflection and the sheen of the gold and all the wonderful textures and everything else. So I don't want to do the exact same finish that I did on this side. So on this side, I'm just going to take, because now it's all dry, right? I'm just going to take the wax itself I'm gonna grab it while we're talking here. I'm gonna take the wax itself on a rag and I'm just going to finish the painting in the same sheen. Now, this wax won't alter the appearance of the gold leaf. It's going to seal all the rest of my painting so that it's not, um, you know, it can be dusted, it can be cleaned. And it'll have the same appearance and the same sheen as this wax 
once this portion is dry. So I poured my triple thick yesterday on this one and today I'm giving it a coat of wax. Once it's fully dry, I may give it a second coat, but I don't know if you can see the gorgeous texture in there, but it actually looks like encaustic because it is so thick that triple thick has given you the depth and then the wax has mattified that so that it looks like wax because it is actually is wax at the end of the day, right? So anyway, so that is my best solution I can offer to you for multi surface or multi finishes in one surface. So you'll often hear me talking about, oh, and the sheen is totally gone down here, which is absolutely lovely. It's hard to see, but um, before it was very um, glossy from the acrylic and now it's so nice and mattified. I love it. Um, but what that does, I have a question from Debbie who says, so is that like cold wax that people talk about? Oh, cold wax. No. So cold wax is actually a painting medium. So think of, this is the way I like to think of cold wax. Cold wax is like, um, taking clear sour cream, if that existed and adding some paint to it. So you now have like hot pink sour cream or something and you're going to paint with it. So all it really does is it thickens um, and adds body to your oil paints. So the reason I don't work with oil paint, one of the reasons I don't work with cold wax as well when I'm doing a painting like this is because it's not a finish, it's a paint. Sorry, a painting medium. So because it's a painting medium and it's an oil painting medium, it is going to take forever to dry. So best dang wax is actually a furniture wax. So remember in the olden days when grandma used to protect her table by putting furniture wax on it? This is what you're looking at now. You're looking at a furniture wax that goes on top of the um, painting. So I use furniture wax as a fine art um, painting finisher medium. So some people, you know, they put, um, varnish on their paintings. They put matte medium. A lot of people seal their paintings in different things. They spray them, they, whatever I use furniture wax, but in some areas, if you want to add depth to it and have it look like faux encaustic, then you would pour the triple thick on first, like I've done here. You're gonna let it dry and it's gonna go clear, absolutely clear. And then once it's dry, it's gonna be really thick and shiny. And then when you put your, your furniture wax on, then you actually have a surface which winds up looking like um, you put encaustic on it in the first place. So that is how I complete mixed media paintings with different finishes. Um, so Best Dang Wax, you can get that on our website on acuratednest.com. Don't forget if you're painting with fire, uh, remember to use your discount code. And if it's sold out, let us know. Um, these things, as soon as I do my lives, they tend to go pretty quickly. Um, but a big can, it's a big can and it will last you a long time. A little goes a long way. And for me, it is one of the best products that, um, I have ever found to do my, my, um, finishes with. Speaking of which I can also tell you now that I'm talking about different products. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but I just painted the side of this with a coat of this new primer we got in. So I used to paint all my edges white afterwards, but because I don't tape my sides, I am a very, very, very messy painter and lots of drips, you know, I use a lot of water. So my sides are always pretty disgusting. So um, we just got this new primer in and I'm gonna see if I can find it just by glancing around my studio because I must've put it somewhere. For those of you who don't paint or who don't tape, sorry, as I'm looking around. Oh, Pam, if you're on, you have to remind me what it's called. <laughs> uh, oh, I see it maybe. Uh, do I see it over here? Anyway, maybe it'll come back to me, kids, but oh, wait a minute. I do know. Here, it's right here. So it's called Boss. 
So Boss is a primer that we sell that I bought it to try it. I wanted to see how it would go, but it stops bleed through. So if you're painting and you're messy like me and you want your sides to be nice and clean, Boss um, by Dixie Bell is the best primer I think I've ever used because that is one coat on these paintings and I have never in my life had clean edged paintings. So that is one coat. So now I can go ahead and I can put um, any color I want or I can put another coat of white or whatever, but look at how nice that is. So that is probably one of the best finishing materials for my use that I have ever, ever, ever seen. Um, yeah, so today was all about finishing and um, I hope you've learned something from from this it is um yeah it's important to know how to finish our painting so if you're strictly encaustic none of this really applies if you're a mixed media and you have areas of difference within your paintings and finishing remember that they all need to be tr uh, treated a little bit differently and a little bit more specially all right thanks for watching and i will see you guys friday